I'm Jennifer Marie Keller. Welcome to my Diary of a Painter. I've been doing a giveaway for this drawing. This drawing I made in my video, Seven Steps to Make a Drawing. If you haven't seen that video, there's a link down below where you can watch it. To be entered into this giveaway, all you have to do is sign up for my monthly newsletter. And the winner is Samuel Munoz. So Samuel, I'll be getting in contact with you shortly to send you this drawing. Thanks for everyone that participated. And if you still want to sign up for my monthly newsletter, please do. You can sign up on my website at jennifermariekeller.com. Scroll down on that first page and you'll see the place where you can put in your information. Or you can send me an email at jennifermariekeller at gmail.com. Give me your name and email address and I'll get you signed up. Okay, so now into this diary entry. So last week I finished up this commission, this private commission painting that I've been working on. Oh, and it feels so good to be done. I love the painting process of doing like big projects, but it always feels so good to mark a painting finished. And for the last few months, I've been really focusing all of my time and energy into this commissioned painting. And so what I like to do when I finish a big project like this is take the painting off the easel and clean up that setup <laughs> that I've been working on for the painting. And I find this, it just feels so good as it's really marking me putting this painting from in progress to a completed finished painting. I remember when I was going to my atelier and when I would finish a painting, that feeling that I'd get cleaning up a setup once my painting was finished and my painting instructors had passed me on that painting. So once they passed me, I would usually do a little video thing showing the setup next to my painting. And then I would like brush the rose petals, the dried rose petals off and take off the stand, the jar of oil and the copper bowl and all of these different elements. Like I, I above the setup, I'd have foam core that was that I would use to cast to cast down shadows and to really affect the light of the piece and so I'd clean all that up so I'd have a fresh space to work on my next painting and so like all the steps that it took to clean up my space was just kind of like a a nice meditative process but also kind of like a celebratory thing cleaning up because I knew I finished a piece and I'm going to start another painting and uh, I really enjoy all the processes, or I usually enjoy the whole process that it takes to making a painting, but my paintings, they usually take weeks, more likely months for me to finish them. So I really enjoy the beginning part of a painting where you're setting up and moving objects around to get like the, the, the perfect composition and like the start of the of the painting where I am um, dry brushing paint onto that like scratchy canvas before like all those texture uh, like the holes in the canvas get filled up with paint so but since the paintings take so long it feels like I haven't done that in such a long time so uh, I always enjoy starting the process over and then getting to do all those steps again and so for the private commission I took the painting off the easel and for that painting it was all photo references. So I had all of these photos taped to my easel, taped to a board. I had my concept image taped to a board right beside the painting. And then I had all of these photos around my space on the ground that I was constantly like going through. And when I was working on different areas of the painting, I'd move the photos around and like put them on the board or others would then get put on the floor as I'm um, just using what I need in that moment. So I cleaned all that up. I moved all the furniture around and swept my studio and really cleaned it up, which always feels good too because I feel like I'm refreshing the space, getting ready for a new project. And so I organized my studio for this large painting that I'm working on. It's four by five foot. And it's a painting that I was working on before, but I really put it on the back burner and then stopped working on it completely when I was focusing on this private commission. So I'm really excited to get back to this large painting and it's more of my comfort zone as I'm uh, doing this from life. I'm using myself as the model and I've got like a still life object that's going to be in the painting and then something new for me too which is a lot of it is out of my imagination. So I'm very very excited 
to get to work on this and also the difference in size as well so that commissioned painting was 11 by 14 and there were four kids in the painting and so they were they were probably like this this big <laughs> in the painting so it was a lot of small brushwork and I was sitting while I was working and I really prefer to stand but for that small painting it really called for like being seated so I have like a steady hand with all of those like little tight movements that I would need to be making to work on that painting but for this big painting the four by five I'm so excited to work on it be standing and there's a lot of movement with it and yeah it's it's I'm super excited to get working on this again so I got it all set up but then the heat broke in our house and it's been very very cold and rainy and windy and my studio is so big which is amazing wonderful but we have we've been using these space heaters and the space heaters just can't warm up my big studio so this week I've been in this room which is the back bedroom which we don't use as a bedroom <laughs> and I've got the space heater in here so it keeps it nice and warm and cozy and I've been working this week all on gallery preparation for gallery submissions which is a big task so I've been doing a lot of research with it doing a lot of writing like the artist statement my biography I'm getting my pieces together working on updating my website more and it's a there's a lot to it so I think it was good that this week I've just been really focusing on that and honestly it's been really nice because I can hear the rain on the roof but this back room I can get it to be nice and warm and cozy so, and so yeah I've been enjoying the process of this and next week hopefully the heater is fixed but even if it's not I'm just gonna probably bundle up because I want to get to that painting so I'm gonna be splitting my days so half the day is gonna be painting and then the next half will be working on this um, on this gallery preparation for submissions and make sure that I can get that get that finished underway and start submitting my portfolio also, I guess since this is in the video, this is something that I've been doing recently that I like, this cork board right here. So these are all of my paintings, either the ideas of paintings that I'm going to be doing, ones that are in progress. So this, this is the finished column of my paintings, and this is the, the current ones, the works in progress. And then these are all ideas for paintings. I think it's too far away, so you can't read them which is probably good so then it, it can be a little bit more secretive which is always fun but uh for the gallery prep stuff I started doing this and I find it really nice because I've, I've had all these ideas and then my my finished paintings these are the most currently finished ones I've got a lot more that that's in my portfolio but so since I've been out of school for about a year and a half I've just been working on things that I'm really drawn to and I guess when I was doing that it was feeling pretty random and I wanted to see if I had cohesion in my work. I feel like I do, I definitely do visually. I think my work is very, it's got like that like romanticized light and these atmospheric type paintings but subject wise I wasn't quite sure if there was a link to everything and so that was one idea why I did this cork board so writing what the painting is and kind of what it means to me the the story element to it because all my paint paintings have like a narrative thread through them and once I did all this it became really obvious that I told it's completely they all make make sense to each other story-wise and so doing this really helped me figure out the themes in my painting. And I liked doing it this way because instead of trying to force myself into focusing on certain themes, this is kind of naturally what I'm drawn to. And so I have a note card. I took it off my board though when I was writing so I could like keep referencing it, but it's usually right here. And that's where I have listed my my themes and I think I have five around five different themes 
that I really, really like and I'm really interested in, but they all, they all go together for sure. <laughs> And so I'm glad I'm doing this because I know for my, I knew before for my paintings that there's a lot of visual unity, but I also don't want the work that I make to be super random. I like feeling focused. And so doing this really helped me see that I do have a lot of focus with the things that I'm naturally drawn to theme wise. Cause I feel me personally, paintings and drawings, I like, I think I, I like the paintings and drawings that have good technique and that are just really, really great to look at. But I also love, I, who doesn't love a good story? And so, and I'm really interested in getting story in a still image. And so I want that to be really important and as strong as how my paintings look technique wise. I want there to be like the thread of story in it that's really strong as well. That has pretty much been my week, so I'm gonna get back to it. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already, and if you're interested, all of my other social media links are in the description box down below. Sign up for my monthly newsletter, which you can do from my website or by emailing me. All that's in the description box below, and I hope you have a good and productive week.